Hey guys, fresh off the mailbox. For today we have the Fire TV Cube. We're gonna open this one, hook it up to the TV, see how it works. Uh, I'm excited about the few features coming in with this box. Uh, purchased it right away from Amazon when it was announced. It was on a discount, $89. I had some points that I've collected over the time. So I think I paid around $60 for this. Um, so I think it's, you know, the money I paid is great. Uh, is it worth $120 where it's going right now? I'm not sure. Um, let's plug it in and see how it works, what else is inside, how it performs. But uh, I have a feeling that it's not going to be that overwhelming considering what's the hardware inside. Pretty much the same hardware that was uh, inside the previous Fire, uh, Fire TV, um, which is again, you know, the 905 processor H that supports, you know, all the new codecs with, paired with the ancient now Mali uh, 450. The only thing they added more, this is uh, 16 gigabytes of internal storage. Uh, we have uh, two gigabytes of RAM. So hopefully that's gonna perform a little bit better. Um, now it has 4K at, um, uh, at 60 frames per second with uh, HDR. Again, great thing. Uh, but as far as I know, it doesn't have Dolby Vision. So what type of the HDR is in it? We'll have to test and see. Uh, again, let's open it, see what's inside the box, hook it up and see how it performs. All right, now that we have the box in front of us, let's quickly uh, look around and see what it is. I've written on it, as you can see, Fire TV Cube with Alexa, great. We have 4K at HDR, Farfield voice control, which they're really marketing this box with this Farfield voice control, so you can control your TV, your TV box, with your um, receiver, a whole bunch of other, you know, <laughs> appliances around your TV that uh, can be controlled via voice, either through the uh, HDMI CC or through the infrared uh, control, the old school infrared. On the side here, we have Alexa again, Farfield voice control, 4K Ultra HD, high dynamic range, IR Blaster, which they provide an extender for the IR Blaster, which is great. Dolby Audio, Quad Core, okay, Bluetooth, uh, and um, dual antennas, uh, uh, wireless AC, 5 gigahertz, which is great. But a uh, great thing about this, they are actually providing you the uh, USB to LAN adapter, which I will be using uh, instead of the wireless. I get a little bit of higher speed. Some of the things in the back, feel free to pause and read through it. And on the side, What's included, we have the Amazon Fire Stick Cube, uh, Alexa voice control, which is the same voice control remote uh, they've been using for the last uh, couple of devices they have. Uh, two double, 3.8 AA batteries, power adapter, IR, IR extender cable, and extender, uh, an ethernet adapter. Now, the biggest disappointing from the package, just uh, to look at it and knowing, uh, is not the inclusion of HDMI cable. Uh, I mean, when you charge people $120, it's expected to have the HDMI uh, cable inside. Quick uh, comparison, the Nintendo Switch has, the, has it or, uh, in the package. Uh, if you buy the Nvidia Shield, has it as well. So I don't know what the deal is, how much money Amazon are actually uh, saving by not including the HDMI cable, but it's a bit of an annoyance. I have a tons of them, so I really don't care, but uh, still at the same time, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of you uh, all of you will, would like to have an HDMI cable, so let's quickly go ahead and open the box. So lifting up, similar style to what they had before from all of, our, all of their devices. Again, uh, again, Amazon logo here. So now we can finally lift up and open and see what's inside. First thing first, here is the cube. Fairly large, kind of like of a square Amazon Echo, if you are familiar with one of those. Inside the first thing we have power adapter, as you can see here, optional IR extender cable, optional ethernet adapter. Good because they're charging, I think 10 or $15 for these if you are willing to buy it for the uh, older generation Fire TV. Good thing they are providing this. Uh, what's in the back, anything interesting? I don't think this is a gigabit. I think it's only 100 megabits, but it's still better than wireless, more reliable. Uh, in that sense so IR extender longer cable we're gonna see how uh, the box performs without it and if we need to use it at all or not but this one needs 15 watt power delivery 
0 0.5 amps. We have output uh, 12 volts, 1.25 amps. So yeah, um, slightly annoyed that this is proprietary. You can't really replace it unless you find you know similar spec charger, but it is what it is. And what else is inside? Some quick start guides, uh, literature that uh, nobody will read. We have the Alexa remote control. All of you are familiar with this with the two Amazon batteries. So that's all that is inside. Uh, all right, so let's plug it into the TV and see how it performs now. But before we move to the actual installation, let's open uh, the, the box and see how it looks like, what are the ports. Um, so on the bottom we have a speaker, I assume. Uh, let me see closer. Yeah, that's probably a speaker, not an active cooling. Uh, the bottom is rubberized with raised feet, which it's nice because as you can see, it's very hard to move it over the surface. That's great, a uh, bit shiny on, on the sides. Uh, obviously there's a plastic, I'm gonna peel that off, but it's still pretty shiny on the top. We have the familiar buttons that we've seen on the other Alexa devices they have. Uh, and on the back where all the magic is, we have the HDMI port, unobstructed and facing where you sit. Okay, the box will sit in an open area, at least one foot away from the speakers. Great, that will be the truth as well. Not in a closed cabinet. All right, we're gonna obey and not do any of that stuff. Let me peel that sticker off. <laughs> of course, if you're touching this box a lot, you will leave a tons of um, fingerprints because the mirror finish is, is just too shiny. So in the back, as you can see, HDMI port, we have the proprietary power, we have the micro uh, USB, and we have the uh, infrared extender right here. They're all labeled, of course, as you can see right there. Uh, and now we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and see if we can uh, get some decent performance and see how it works with my local server and the media streaming on the internet. I'll be right back. All right, now that we have it all set up, as you can see, sitting in front of my two retro Xbox first generations right here on top of the TV stand, uh, we have plugged in the back power, HDMI, and the USB to LAN adapter they provide. Uh, as you can see in the back, uh, if you're wondering, this is uh, Mocha 2.0 Motorola adapter right there. These are some great devices, by the way. I'm going to do another review on these. Uh, I've been using it for a month now and I'm extremely pleased. But back onto the Fire uh, TV uh, with Alexa all set up and, uh, you know, obviously hearing her name, she wakes up. Let's try a few things uh, with the voice commands. Um, the, it's a really breeze to go through the setup. Once you plug it in, it will come up with the already uh, new um, update on the OS. The update is pretty fast, less than five minutes. After that, uh, it will bring you on to a self kind of guided, voice guided setup. So you can set up uh, your voice guidance to turn on and turn off TVs, um, your sound bars, your um, other uh, boxes around you have and just to pan down a little bit and show you what I have right there this is my um, sort of a quote-unquote no-name um, soundbar it's called Bon um, I think it's a German uh, company uh, very very cheap I bought it for this spare uh, bedroom that I'm testing right now with this uh, TV uh, but it was able to pick up uh, the, this brand. It was listed without any problems. It set it up with, uh, without any issues. So now with the voice, it will be able to turn it on, turn it back off, turn on the TV, turn it back off, which is really convenient in my mind. I was not expecting to be that pleased with the setting and how it's working. But after testing it in, in like seconds ago, I can tell you it's definitely worked. But uh, let's uh, move back a little bit and see uh, if we can run a few tests uh, on, on this device right now. All right now, so let's try a few voice commands and see how the uh, new Fire TV will respond. We're gonna start with this one. Alexa, turn on the TV. Okay. And there we go, as you can see, it takes uh, just a few 
uh, seconds to, to get right into it. And uh, we have our uh, TV on with the interface and everything. This is excellent. Let's try another thing. Alexa, launch Netflix. Here's Netflix. Okay, that was really fast, about uh, three, four seconds. I'm sure if you're skilled with your remote control, you're probably gonna be faster uh, with a couple seconds, but uh, it's definitely not as slow as I was expecting it to be. Uh, let's try another command. Alexa, go home. This takes the uh, previous screen. Let's try another command. Alexa, launch Hulu. Here's what I found. Okay, that was not very responsive or not very accurate. Alexa, launch Hulu. Okay. Okay, maybe you uh, misunderstood me the first time, but now it starts Hulu. And as you can see again, three to four seconds, no problem. Starts it uh, right away. Alexa, go home. Okay, let's try another one. Alexa, launch Plex. Here's Plex. Okay, again, very fast. Very nice. Alexa, go home. Let's try something uh, that I've not tried before. Um, Alexa, play some music. Here's a playlist you might like. Soul for Spring from Amazon Music. Okay. Let's see if uh, we can increase and decrease the volume uh, with the voice command. Alexa, decrease the volume. Okay. Definitely that worked out. Let's try the other way around. Alexa. Increase the volume. Alright, I guess this is working. Alexa, stop music. Alexa, go home. So, I mean, I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, it's not as delayed or slow as I was expecting or reading uh, on some other reviews. Um, it definitely takes uh, two, three to four or five seconds to launch some of those applications uh, and go straight to into it. But uh, to be honest, uh, you know, if you're laying in, in bed and you're trying to uh, talk to it uh, without navigating with your uh, remote, I think it's pretty functional and not any problem at all. Um, let's try this. Alexa, turn off the TV. And there we go. TV's off, the soundbar is off. Um, I think it's very, very good for this uh, particular um, situation. Again, let's try this. Uh, Alexa, turn on the TV. Okay. And yeah, can you do it with your remote? Yeah, it will be faster, definitely. Um, but, you know, with the convenience, which one are you gonna take? Um, to be honest, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge user or fan of, uh, you know, Alexa or any other uh, voice assistants, but here I can definitely see the um, practical application and the way that uh, it can work and, and people can, can use it. Um, let's move on to the actual playback on, on some uh, videos. I'm not expecting to have any problems with that, even with the cheapest uh, Amazon stick that you can see down here on the uh, left corner of your screen that I'm using all the time. Uh, playback is fluid without any problems, even with the uh, heaviest files I have or streaming uh, with no problem. So I'm not expecting to, to, to see any issues here, especially with this latest uh, edition of the Fire uh, TV. But let's uh, launch some uh, uh, movies on Plex from my Walco server, server and see how that's gonna work. All right, so now let's try this after I uh, submit my information for the Plex, Plex server. Let's see if Alexa will be able to help us. Alexa, play early man on Plex.
Now, as you can see, it offers us to go to uh, the uh, Amazon store and rent or buy the, the movie instead of playing it on Plex. So let's try again uh, with different command. Uh, Alexa, go home. Alexa, go home. Alexa, start Plex. Alexa, play early man. Yeah, obviously that is not working. It's not that deep. Can I recognize my uh, actual library and play uh, that movie from there? So yeah, that's about it. So voice commands are extending to the uh, way of just launching the application. Let's try it with Netflix and see if that's gonna work out. All right, now that I entered the uh, Netflix credentials, let's uh, try one more time with a different option. Alexa, play Stranger Things on Netflix. Here's Stranger Things. All right, so this one works. Uh, so opens Netflix app, launches the uh, show with no problems. So, okay, great. Alexa. Go home. Let's try with another show. Um, Alexa, play Dark on Netflix. Here's Dark. All right. This one is working too. Great. Alexa, go home. Well, so far, um, you know, works with some of those commands with Netflix, uh, Hulu, uh, obviously the Amazon Prime Video, uh, some of those more common and more native uh, applications. It's not uh, going to play anything off of, uh, you know, XBMC or Kodi or SPMC or uh, not going to play anything from your Plex server. It will open the app, but will not play it. Uh, as comes for the playback, um, you know, obviously I cannot demonstrate completely the abilities, but it plays everything fine with no problem, at least with all the files I have, even the uh, bigger ones. Uh, is this going to replace my uh, NVIDIA Shield as a main um, device for entertainment? No, absolutely not. The NVIDIA Shield is still the best powerful one that you can use, uh, plays absolutely everything, uh, delivers outstanding performance when it comes to a raw or high bitrate out audio to your um, external um, amplifiers or receivers. But in a situation like that, when you have a TV and you have just a simple uh, sound bar on a bedroom or spare, uh, spare room that you're using, Yes, it will work perfectly well. You're not going to have any problems with the sound or the visuals whatsoever. But if you're relying on this to be your main home theater device, don't do this to yourself. I'm going to say that right now. Uh, with $120, you better give another 30 and just get the Nvidia Shield TV. But if you get it on the promo, less than 100, it's great. It's good to have it. Uh, like I said, it was a spare bedroom. And it will work work all the time with no problems whatsoever. We'll play everything. The voice commands are great, uh, but don't rely to it as a main, main uh, home uh, theater experience. But so far, I think it's a, it's a win, especially in my situation. I paid less than $70 for this one, uh, so I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm going to continue testing it here. I'm going to hook it up uh, later on a, a later video to uh, HDR TV and see how the HDR performance is going to be. I'm sure with time, they're going to continue to improve it and it's going to get better and better. All right, before we go, let's look at the few more technical things, uh, more on details about the speed we're getting through the LAN adapter and some of the hardware options. So if you're going to launch the fast speed test here from Netflix, let's see what we're going to get on the first launch, almost maxing out this 100 megabits adapter. As you can see 91 megabits which is great i think it's significant enough to stream anything even 4k content with the 
uh, highest bit rate possible. Um, let's go back to the beginning and from here we're gonna go to CPU-Z and see some of the hardware uh, that it's um, available. So as you can see the processor is a good old well-known Amlogic uh, 905H 4 core clocked at 1.5 gigahertz um, with paired with Mali 450 our again well-known ancient almost uh, GPU if we go to the device information here you gonna see uh, one uh, thing is the RAM it shows 1.5 uh, gigabytes. I don't know if 500 gigabytes are allocated for the OS or it's just uh, lower but that's what it is available RAM shows about 481 megabytes and we have internal storage that it's uh, 12.39 and available currently is almost 11 gigabytes after those apps are installed already if we go to the system at least we're gonna see here that right on top this latest build is actually running on Android 7.1.2 which is great to see because the other devices I believe even the latest update on the Fire Stick is still on Android 6 and seeing this one on Android 7 is actually great security patches from March 1st ideally I would like to see it a little bit newer but it is what it is still not that bad at all uh, not too many other uh, things to see over here but that's it um, all the technical information you need to see and for now again I'm out I think that's uh, a good device uh, especially if you are going to be able to buy it on promotional prices cheaper prices because on 120 I think it's not the best I think for $30 more you're going to be able to get the Nvidia Shield TV which is far far superior but this is for now overall good device I'm going to continue to test it and use it here and report back to you in a further video that's about it hit the thumbs up if you like the video subscribe if you're new and until next time guys you have a wonderful day